allows you to do that, or you'll be writing a story and you'll realize while you're writing it, oh, I'm writing about so which, X. So which happened? It was, this, it was the latter on this project. How long did it take you to write this? Four and a half years. What, what sort of inspired you? I know, <laughs> <laughs> I know. <laughs> it's ridiculous. Uh, what inspired me? Yeah. Um, I wrote a story when I was a grad student about about bits and ash, uh -huh. and I was it was sort of a, an effort to explore the feeling that I get as a Jew in America hearing about suicide bombings in Israel. And the story was that Bits heard about a suicide bombing in Jerusalem and knew her brother was living there and was waiting for him to call. And by the end of the story, he still hadn't called. So it was sort of haunting, and I thought I was done with it, but I wound up returning to it later, and it developed into a novel. Do you think you'll return to these so, characters again? What's that? Do you think you'll return to these characters again? I think again? that these characters are much better off without me. <laughs> <laughs> I have, I cause them nothing but grief, so I'm glad that they're... <laughs> it's grief that makes them grow. Yeah. Do you I think of them as real people in your life? They're sort of like imaginary friends. We all you know? imaginary friends. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but... <laughs> <laughs> So um, it, they became real people to me when other people started talking about them. I couldn't believe it. I was like, how do you know them? Yeah. You know, it was really weird to me because they felt like imaginary friends. For four and a half years, I was with them. I was alone with them all the time. And then suddenly people were talking about them like they were real. So now, yeah, I guess they kind of do feel, they feel kind of like friends from my past now. Um, you have like pictures of their faces? Oh, I head? know exactly what they look like. Yeah. yeah. But the, I used cool. to not. At, at, it's so <laughs> bizarre. At first, I didn't. They used to be blurry to me, and then. Do you ever dream about them? Time, I don't think I have. What do they look like? Yeah. Um, the girl. Yeah. The girl looks like me. <laughs> kind of. In the, <laughs> <laughs> the girl looks like. <laughs> I mean, so, over since we're talking about narcissism, um, <laughs> and. I, I mean, there's descriptions of all of them in the book, so you can read. But isn't every character based? But I don't think you wrote in the book the girl looks like me. <laughs> <laughs> so like, well, Who's that would me? involve some deductive reasoning. My author photo's on the back. Who does who does who does Ash look like? No one that does I know. Does he look like your brother? <laughs> no, not really. Ex-boyfriend? No. A friend? He's a, he's an imagined an actor. An actor. <laughs> um, I see. I no. I don't see anybody in particular. He looks like um. He looks like himself. But yeah. the girl looks like you. I need coincidentally. Oh, yeah. Is this her? I don't know who this is. It's a model. Yeah, it's a model. So. Well, thanks for coming, everybody. This is so nice of you. Um, that was very good. I enjoyed the book. I'm so glad. I enjoyed our intimate chat. Yeah. And it's so good to see you. <laughs> um, thank you for caring. My next book is not is not going anywhere right now because I've been on book tour for two months. So, but it you know theoretically it's happening. It was happening before. Um, <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> yeah, I noticed. Um, it was happening before book tour started. So I. Very, very much looking forward to getting back to it. After this, I'm not doing that much more traveling. After this, after tomorrow, so yeah. So, um, how many stops did you do on the? I, I didn't keep track. A is lot. it just domestic or is it? Yeah. yeah. So far, um, what's the most memorable thing that's happened on book tour? Yeah. Okay. The most memorable thing that's happened was um, one of the most. Um, so you asked about my second novel. The novel I'm working on now is a novel set at a weight loss camp in North Carolina. And I worked at a weight loss camp a couple summers ago for 10 weeks. And, um, and then I gave a reading a few weeks ago in North Carolina. And one of the kids from the weight loss camp came to my reading and had lost all of his weight. Oh, cool. And it made me cry. It was so amazing. Did you recognize so, him immediately? No. I couldn't believe it, so that was one of the that was one of the most memorable things. But a lot of really strange things have happened on book tour. It's been weird. Um, it's been amazing. But um, how long did it take you to get the, the book published after you finished it? Um, I don't really even know when I finished it because I thought so many times that I had finished it and I hadn't. But from the time I got my agent until the time it sold was about a year and a half closer to two years so I got my agent like 
I guess it was January of 06. Sold it in September of 07. So is that whatever that is. And how did you get the agent uh, right out of grad school? Or, uh, I got my, my agent represents one of my friends, okay. the, um, the author Christina Enriquez. She um, wrote a book called Come Together, Fall Apart, and then her next book is coming out in the spring. It's called The World in Half. And she had been really happy with her agent, and she's one of my readers. So she read my novel and then asked if she could show it to her agent. And so that was who I wound up signing with. And uh, how many rewrites did you have to go through? Probably, oh, after I got my yeah, agent? Yeah. My agent and I, um, I worked on it with her for about, oh, I mean, a lot. I did a lot. <laughs> I did a lot of rewriting, yeah. several yeah. rewrites. So, yeah. Writing is all about rewriting. <laughs> What's your uh, <clears throat> profession while you're writing this? Um, I've always had odd jobs. I never would take on another career because I didn't want to have a career that wasn't this. So I have, currently I'm teaching and working in a bar and working as a ghostwriter doing some like freelance stuff. So, um, But I've done all kinds of things like I... I had a fellowship at San Jose State for a year. I was a writer in residence at a boarding school. Sort of whatever I could do to um, make writing the center, the centerpiece of my life, and just without really giving myself over to anything else. So. Were your parents concerned when you said you wanted to be a writer? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Did you just like see? concern on their face or did they express it explicitly well I my 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 mom thought that it was it was something I should do as a hobby so that I mean I guess that's concern you know because I don't think that they knew anybody who did it professionally and so they didn't you know the thing about choosing to be an artist of any kind as I, I think many of you know is that you make up your own life you don't have a template nobody else when you're an artist you just have to do what works for you in order to make your art your main focus so you know if you decide you want to be a lawyer well you go to law school and then you work in a law firm and you work your way up you do there's a trajectory but for this there isn't and I think that's concerning there's never any guarantee of money there's never even if you make money you know you get an advance on a book you make a, a chunk of money there's no guarantee it'll ever happen again there's no guarantee that it, that the book is going to go well um, so I think that's concerning to many parents, probably. Especially parents who had, you know, a doctor and, yeah, you know, another exactly. son who's a lawyer, you know, and they exactly. see the, those trajectories, as you say, and then, you know, if, if I think if two, both your parents are artists, you know, in my case, my mom's an artist, right. and I said, I want to go be a musician, she, cool. Right. Sounds good to me, you know? But I think if you have, you know, parents who aren't that way, exactly. it's, it's a further stretch. How imagine. concerning is it to you? <laughs> Being a writer? Yeah, as far as survival, financial survival. Um, the uncertainty has been less devastating since the novel sold. Before that, I, you know, before that it was a huge struggle. Now it's still a struggle. I get nervous, but I'm not, I don't feel the way I did before. Like, now I know who I am. I know what I'm doing. But, um, but... But, yeah, before it was an, an enormous struggle. Before you have a book, to, people ask you, what do you do? Yeah, and, and you say you're a writer, and they say, yeah. oh, what, what have you, what have you written? Yeah. Well, all yeah, these things you that you'll never see, you know. <laughs> it's a big joke out here. Somebody says they're an actor. Yeah, an actor. Oh, right. I've been at the restaurant so, down the street. Yeah, yeah, Jerry's Deli. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> I've been in that. Yeah. When you, were, uh, when you were writing your book, what was the most self-revealing part I hope no one's asked to see? Self-revealing? Yeah, you know, when you come to that part of the book where you're, you're writing it and then you just sort of, either if you have a pen or if you're at your computer, you just to sit back and go, wow, like something that you learned about yourself. About myself. Didn't, didn't really realize before was there that moment in this book. You're so pretty, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> you're strikingly beautiful. Um, Self-revealing. Probably the anonymous sex. <laughs> She's not allowed to be smart on top of that. I think one. I think what I learned about myself uh, um, that I was happy to learn is that um, is that I don't give up very easily. So because there was a lot of reason to. 